My name is Jamie Williamson. I'm the executive vice president here at Scripps Research, and it's it's a real honor to uh, introduce you to Barry Sharpless, the winner of the 2022 Nobel Prize in Chemistry. Uh, what's really remarkable is that Barry is one of only two scientists in history to have won two Nobel Prizes. So this is his second. Uh, his first Nobel was in 2001 for looking at uh, chirally catalyzed oxidation reactions. And uh, this present Nobel Prize is for developing click chemistry. And I think rather, I, rather than have me repeat the citation uh, of the Nobel Committee, I think uh, maybe we would give Barry the chance to tell us about his inspiration. And we're going to be taking questions from this group. And I would just ask that you type it into the chat or the Q&A. And then I'll uh, lead the discussion with Barry and we can get your questions answered. So, so Barry, uh, it's been a, it must have been a remarkable day uh, so far. Um, how did you yeah. hear? Well, thank you, Jamie. I, I was, uh, yeah, w woken up at... Uh, um, is it two about two thirty, I guess, and and uh, and and uh, Jan had, had held a computer in front of me with three faces on it. Yeah, and, Jan is uh, your wife, yes. Yeah, my wife, Jan. And so after that, then uh, I was lucky. I got to go back to sleep for a while, and she just handled things herself. And she, <laughs> so I was. But anyway, I, I was amazed that I could sleep some more. But I had. I must admit that, that I've been teased about this for a long time because the click chemistry was a popular area, at least as popular as anything I've done. And so I expected uh, something might happen, but I knew that it was uh, there are a lot of other people that went, are in line to win Nobel Prizes. So you kind of think, well, don't, don't take it too seriously. Anyway, the reason maybe interesting for people to know is that uh, prizes, I mean, for me, prizes, uh, it's, uh, I get, they kind of, uh, I don't suit them very well because I, they don't change me at all. And they give me, a, they don't help me make more money either, except that I convinced Richard to hire me. I guess that's how I got more money for, for out of the prizes. But prizes aren't what I'm doing science for, I'm for, uh, for better or for worse. So I have to do it. It's kind of a compulsion. It's kind of a risk-taking operation. And I like to find an area where the ideas can be uh, can lead you into something more dramatic and well, nothing like Einstein, but Einstein said it well, and that is, if at first an idea, the idea is not absurd, then there's no hope for it. But that wasn't his, he was a nice guy. He didn't say things like that very often, but we understand what he's saying, where you get E equals MC squared from is not even worth talking about for most of us. Uh, but that, that's kind of, thing that I found if I, I, I quit doing chemistry in an area uh, which I had done by the long before I, I, I started I started click chemistry started long before I got a Nobel Prize and uh, for the other re reaction so uh, I was already working on, on click chemistry and and trying to uh, see where it could go and it was it didn't take long but I got really lucky a lot of things happened. But lucky is something which I've been all my life. I, I just don't know. I mean, because I'm not too good at communicating. And uh, But I get excited and I run into the lab. And we have to do it tonight. We have to prove it's wrong tonight. And uh, that's that's the kind of things I like to have, something where I can shoot it down. And it's, the idea of shooting it down. Is Barry, Barry, one of your uh, one of the papers that the Nobel Committee cited was really this. It was almost a position piece saying, I have this idea for click chemistry, and this is what it should look like. And then the next year, it was when you had a particular reaction. What was the aha moment? Uh, well, the aha moment, I guess I've always been impatient. I like to go in the lab, mix up some things that work, and I go on from there. If I have to wait a day or two, I just can't. That's not good. So I'm trying to create a chemistry that moves in hours instead of days. And 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 so the aha moment. Yeah, no, you don't. I can't quite go that far because uh, we didn't. Yeah, we start. Uh, it's going to be a hard one. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's it's, it's good. It's all good. Right. We we just want to we just want to hear how you think. <laughs> 
Yeah, I wish I could tell you that because I, I get asked that a lot over my life. I and mean, my friends ask me, and you know, sitting in groups where after a conference and we're you know recap of the conference, they say, okay, okay, fine. But where do you get more ideas than other people? And that can be interesting. And and I say, God almighty knows. I, I just know that. I don't, I, I, I get excited when I see something that doesn't fit, like anomalies, and I collect anomalies my whole life, and I, some of these anomalies point to each other, and when that happens, then you have a way of possibly doing something that can address whether that thing is possible in the real world, and one of the things that's most dramatic about humans is that we're so impressed by ourselves and we think we have so many things we can do well i mean it's a miracle we can do anything in the world of biology and and i mean in, in the chemistry world the, the molecules that we need to manipulate are the size of a grain of sand i mean size a grain of sand and my hands are the size of a small earth or or a small moon i mean we're trying to do something that doesn't make any sense and we know it, it that we can think about it but and we can we think we can think about it, but honestly, God, we always fall or uh, default to drawing things on blackboards. And this is what we think the molecule is, right? And and that's our brain is not not going to worry about it too much. That's the best we can do. Well, I don't think it's the best we can do. I think we have to let the molecules worry for themselves. And we have to. I worry for the molecules so much about every little thing that goes into the reaction. What the molecules going <laughs> to think about that? And and that's. I'm, I'm smart enough to know you cannot think like a molecule, but I, I find it very helpful to think like a molecule. And then I can get through life much easier that way, chemistry synthesis. So, and, so we'd like to hear uh, some of the questions from the, from the attendees. So please uh, type, it, type into the chat if you, if you have something particular that, that you'd like to ask. Uh, so, so Barry, maybe let me ask you what, you know, what, what kinds of thing, you know, you invented these click reactions that could snap molecules together. So what are, what are some of the applications? What have people been using this for? And because it's not enough to just invent an interesting reaction. It has to have an impact on, on, on human society. So what, what are, what's, what are people using the click reaction for? Well, I think that's a story that has a nice lecture to go with it, but just to say quickly, we hope for better reactions. There is no such thing as a perfect reaction and nature doesn't care about perfect reactions. She, she uh, can fix what doesn't go right, but we can't do a damn thing about something that goes wrong. So if we don't have a perfect reaction, what, what is a perfect reaction? That means you put the ingredients together and you correct, collect the product 100% pure from the drain hole of the bathtub. So you pour everything in, stir it a bit and out comes the pure product. Why don't we have more of those? Well. Most everything we do causes side products. Nature makes side products too. Uh, you can't have a, even one side product. No side products, you got a perfect reaction if it's driven. So the copper reaction dropped into our lap and uh, one, it came from working with Palmer Taylor and MG on making an in situ click reaction go. That was mm -hmm. really yep. surprised us. But we didn't have the two isomers of the triazole. We only had a way to make a mixture. And one of the students said, well, let's try to find a way to make the pure ones. So Luke Green went in the lab that night and uh, we found we had found that we needed the other one because the sin, because life makes the sin in our enzyme, didn't make the anti. And, mm -hmm. and Luke did the QAC reaction and it was over in a minute. He thought it was starting. He, analyzed it oh that's the starting material it was a product and the qac reaction cannot be stopped i mean you, it'll go 100 percent every time and you can have it in urine you can have it in minestrone soup you can right. have it in acid or base it's it's just some sort of weird happening right i mean it's okay. an immortal yeah you know, one of, one of the things that's most remarkable, you know, is th that this reaction is compatible with biology. It's compatible with cells and water and oxygen. And, and you can, you can, you have these two groups that you identified and you can put them into cells and then they'll, they'll do the reaction, but they're completely uh, tolerated by, by biology. They don't do anything to cells until you click and- Jeez. 
that's the thing. If I had a graphic I could use here, I would take a picture of the Earth over the Pacific from one of the shuttles that go, went out. And that, that would be the metaphor that, that we're an ocean planet that's all blue out there in the Pacific. And there's oxygen and water. If you can't be happy with oxygen and water, you shouldn't be playing with humans who think they can control mo the molecules. We, things we do should be happy like us in oxygen and water. That's it. Doesn't sound very sensible, but looking, we found another one. And then mm -hmm. the fellow in China, my student uh, Jia Jia Dong, who's a, now a famous professor, he found another one. And, you know, once you start looking for perfect reactions, maybe they're not so hard to find. And what is a perfect reaction? Well, it goes 99.9999 plus. And when you start having trouble with a perfect reaction, it, it, it loses a few of the nines. But you, even if you do it 20 times, it's still in the 99 category. Whereas if you have a 99% yield reaction, we love as chemists, 99% already you're down to... Uh, some ridiculous number by 50 reactions or 10 reactions, you're you're in deep trouble making high products. So this is another story. It's just that it sounds a little bit arrogant, but I didn't realize how how important it was not to make to have a really great reaction. And we found so now we're looking for those. Nobody could have guessed they could exist. I didn't think they could exist, but now with QAC, they can they go in blood. It goes in blood. It goes in. Uh, mm -hmm. Acid, it goes, uh, it's just a weird reaction. QAC, QAC is the copper, copper uh, acetylene uh, yep. azide. It yep. just click. And yeah. Okay. So, so Barry, we, we have a question from uh, one of the attendees here. Um, and, and can you discuss what it means to be one, one of two people that's gotten two Nobel Prizes? I How didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know the other gentleman, uh, Sanger, Fred Sanger, I think, yep. he, Englishman, right? I think he got it for DNA sequencing and protein sequencing. Yeah. DNA. Right. Yep. See, that guy wanted to be useful. That's very important. I mean, he got rewarded for being useful too, right? Being useful. Like everybody wanted to know what the sequences of our incredible mixed up mm -hmm. biomolecules are, and that's... That was awesome because he was the right place at the right time. And and I, I really admire, I, I know he's, uh, those two things, that's enough for a, a, noble, a noble prize, right? You do one, you do the other. Next thing you know, you sequence the brain, how it thinks, and then right. that'll be a good day. But, you know, your, your first Nobel Prize was really this holy grail of chemistry, which is can you make asymmetric molecules uh, at will? And that was that that was a clear that that was a tool that that was a very clear goal of chemistry and and so but this the second tool that you came up with it was a bit more whimsical it was more born out of a of an idea that oh you know we could we should be making molecules you know like with little magnets and click things together so so it seems to me you've you've got this really creative spirit that 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 you've harnessed to think about chemistry and come up with two really transforming kinds of reactions that change the world well thank you jamie i i think the most important part of what you're saying is is that um what well, you know this uh do you know this thing written in science by by uh, I forget his name now strong inference it was written in that mm -hmm. Uh, in 1960s, and it came from Chamberlain before that, where the idea of multiple working hypotheses, you know, if you, it, I mean, Chamberlain uh, and others who wrote about this, uh, they, they said you ought to be able to destroy one of your hypotheses in the shower once a week or, or every other day, or, you know, you should constantly be trying to destroy your own, working with your, but keeping everybody's multiple working hypotheses up there to the extent they're, they're worth it. And, and that, that is so powerful. If you can just, if you can just say, why am I wanting to do that? See, we, we love our children and our, and our ideas. And so they become like, uh, our children, and we can't, you can't kill your children. I mean, you don't you know that makes no sense in any way you think of it. And so we, but we want to do that with our ideas. If you can't do that, and, and it feels like chemistry, 
there's so many things you can't anticipate. So if you cover a lot of ground, you got a much better chance in a short life to hit some really good ground where things aren't at all the way we were taught because the, the things we're taught, the limitations that look to appear really going to stop you in so many ways, all the ones that don't fit your idea when you started with this idea, that's absurd. By the time you get further in, they all come down in a house of cards at once the idea switches and you find that you run that, now you run the control experiments and you see why the other things couldn't have worked. It was just our set of, of views on how they're lined up. And yeah, I guess, I don't know, yeah. So are, are they gonna have live ceremony in uh, Stockholm? Hmm, what kind of live you mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, are, uh, it's not gonna be virtual, I mean. Oh they... no, yeah. Definitely, it's going to, unless something really goes wrong, I guess that right now they're saying it's live. Good. That's yeah. great. I mean, uh, as you, as many of you know, we had a happy occasion a year ago where Artem Padaputian won the oh. Nobel Prize and we had a, a local ceremony. They were not doing the full, uh, full King's King of Sweden treatment. Um, so I think, uh, I hope you get to go to Stockholm. It's going to be, that's always a real, well, you've been. <laughs> Art, Artem is uh, going to be there because he, he gets, uh, they, the ones that didn't Oh, get okay. So person. they're, they're yeah. going to catch up. That's yeah. great. That's terrific. Well, listen, Barry, um, I think uh, we're really proud of you. Uh, I hope everybody got a sense for, um, uh, you know, the, your your free thinking spirit that has enabled you to uh, just be one of the thought leaders in, of chemistry. Um, we have oh we have one other little quick question we can go into. Um, this is a good question. Uh, so who helped you on your scientific journey? So you know who were your mentors that shaped how you think about chemistry? It's a good question. Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, I, Van Tamlin, Eugene Van Tamlin. He he sort of retired a bit early, and but he was the most creative chemist of his generation, in my opinion. And he was very so, unusual. So that was, he was a Stanford professor. Yeah, he came from, from Wisconsin mm -hmm. to Stanford. He was just the year I arrived. It was an amazing year. All the Sterling had gotten money for Stanford, and Stanford suddenly just bought everybody they wanted, and everybody came. Three or four chemistry profs were stolen from the Midwest, and so. Uh, and and Van Tamlin, well, he his advice to me right away to all of us: don't do anything. First rule of good good thinking in science is don't do anything you know you can do. Now that goes against what all the guys like me and worried about getting an academic job, getting tenure. We're thinking, what kind of things can we line up that will just seem to have a lot of papers in the first few years and. But no, that's not the way it works. In fact, you shouldn't even worry about papers. George Bushy later told me that he said, Barry, uh, don't, uh, he says, Barry, Barry, don't, don't worry about papers. Just try to publish a few good ones. <laughs> oh, he was my Swiss, my Swiss grandfather at MIT. Yeah. Just try to publish a few good ones. That's that's a really good one. Uh, the chairman, the U.S., the leader of the of, of the, this place. You have to worry about what numbers, right? We all have to worry oh. about. Yeah, we a, a few good ones is really good if they get you the Nobel Prize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what okay. else? Oh, the, yeah, like you triggered some other thoughts, but 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 it was, um, it, yeah. It and I just really was lucky to have a photographic memory uh, and love the periodic table. And actually, I'm really an evo evolution. I love evolution. And I, I love evolution. I don't actually believe in Darwinian totally. I need the entropy term. I need the dissipated thing. And so it, it, I, I can use, oh, I better not get into this. It might go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay. We, yeah. Let's, uh, Barry, let, I think I think at this point we'll we'll take a pause and we'll, you know, thanks for uh, taking the time. I'm sure your the phone is ringing off the hook. You've got the emails. But yeah, things are going uh, bing, bing, bing up in my yeah. corner. <laughs> yeah, we we we're, we're glad we could have this opportunity to have a chat with you. Uh, you know, it's it's great for you. It's great for scripts. We're thrilled to have you as our colleague. So thank you, thank you everybody for for coming in and and uh, 
sharing a little time with us on this happy day. Thank you. Bye.